What's up dogs? I just got back from a trip where I edited all my photos and videos exclusively on this M1 MacBook Air. So I wanted to check in and give an update on the performance since recording my last video. You can watch the first video about how the Adobe apps perform on the M1 MacBook Air here. This video is going to have two parts. First, we're gonna do a rapid fire FAQ based on the comments and questions I got on the first video. Second, I'll note some things that I've seen personally, specifically about working in the Adobe apps over the past three months or so. And use the chapters to jump right to that second part if that will please you. First question, how is it for travel? The short answer is that it is lovely. This is the smallest machine I've ever used. And although I miss some screen real estate, the portability is fantastic. I do want to note that on 256 gigs of storage, you're gonna fill it up very, very quickly. For this reason, I like to work directly off of these USB-C drives. You're definitely gonna need a dongle because Mac life, and you'll probably want a big bad drive for longer term storage or backups. On this trip, I was taking a lot of time lapses. I was also running the GoPro near continuously on my bag, taking video. So I ran up easily 150 gigs just over the course of three days. I don't have 150 gigs left on the machine itself, so you can see why you're going to need other storage. Next question, would this work as a main device? I think some people could swing this as their main device. I've been trying to use it a lot more in preparation for moving and attempting to be more nimble in the work that I'm doing. But with that being said, it's best suited for people who are going to make use of cloud storage and probably for people who are in Photoshop and Lightroom mainly not so much for those who are using Premiere. As far as I can gather from other reviews, Final Cut seems to work better as it's a native Mac app than Premiere does. Let me know in the comments if I should download a trial and compare myself. Next question, should I get a Windows PC with better components? This is a tough one. I think this one depends on your budget. I've used a lot of Windows PCs for work exclusively in the past, and they've all kind of sucked except for one. And that one machine was pretty bulky and pretty expensive. For whatever reason, they just don't seem to have the longevity. And for that reason, I tend to put my money into a Windows tower, and then I like to have the Mac hardware on the laptop side. In my last data job before freelancing, I did have the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the i9, and that was fabulous. I was very devastated to have to turn that in. If you can spend more than a thousand and want a Windows laptop, I would look at the offerings from Razer. I've considered getting them in the past and still would very much consider getting one of those in the future, given how using a tower is difficult without a dedicated desk. You know, otherwise, if you're constrained to kind of this M1 MacBook Air price point, I think putting it into this machine specifically is going to give you the best longevity. I shoot weddings, I'm in Adobe CC daily, should I get the Air or the Pro? I would say skip both and get the Mac Mini. That's what I would have done if I didn't need the screen. More seriously, if you need the laptop format, I would go with the Pro model and 16 gigs of RAM. Your imports, your exports, culling through photos after you've had the apps open for a while does seem to slow this one down. And I just can't imagine if I'm shooting weddings for a living, kind of having to deal with that slowness. Spending several hundred more dollars on the machine up front is going to save you hours and hours over the life of ownership. So I think if you can just swing it and upgrade. It gets warm, does it get hot? I would say I've gotten this very warm, but not flaming. To be continued, the 16 gigs make a difference from eight gigs in Lightroom and Photoshop. I want to get a pro for the fan to keep it cooler, but then 16 gigs is even another step of investment. And kind of a couple questions here in that same vein. I think what's happening is people see the sticker price on this M1 8 gig Air, they get intrigued, and when they go to configure, they know they're going to want a little bit more. Deep down, I think they know they're going to need a little bit more if they want it to last for years. And then at that point, they're looking at 14, 15, 1600, and it's a different story. When it slows down for me, it's when I have Lightroom and Photoshop open simultaneously, or if I'm just working for a long period of time, there might be some kind of memory leak or something. If you think about the workflow, I'm calling photos in Lightroom, and then going through and editing them. I get to a photo where I wanna pull into Photoshop and maybe do some content where fill. That's when I'm gonna to start to see some of the slowdown. Even then it's usable. You're getting much more honestly out of this eight gigs of RAM than you would on an Intel-based Mac with eight gigs. But at the end of the day, the Adobe apps are what they are. And I think 16 gigs is going to allow you to use multiple of those apps at once or just streamline performance when you're using single apps at a time. If you're looking to get four or five years out of a machine like this, you need to go 16. Photography is a hobby. I use Lightroom for editing, not daily use, first time Mac buyer. Press the buy button. This is a great intro into both the Apple hardware and software. I think it fits perfectly for hobbyist and enthusiast creators. 
I think it's tough to go wrong getting this model. There have been some Adobe CC updates. Yep, so since trying this the first time, Premiere Beta has seemed to export things faster. Photoshop was just updated for compatibility and that definitely opens faster and saves larger files faster. So the cool thing here, no matter what M1 model you're going after, I think these non-Apple apps are only going to get more performant over time. And then just kind of generally, which M1 should I get? My recommendations are as follows. If you don't need the laptop, if you can live without this form factor and the screen, the Mac mini is by far the best value for money. You can get a lot of computing power in a very small form factor for a reasonable price. If you're an internet app user, if you're a hobbyist, an enthusiast photographer, maybe a little bit of video work, or you're like me and you do a lot of this stuff daily, but are using this as a companion computer to another one that you already own, this is great. And I think you can get away with either the Air or the Pro at some of those base levels with the eight gigs of RAM. If you're a full-time professional in the Adobe Creative Cloud, I think you want 16 gigs of RAM. If you've got more than say $1,500 that you can budget for a machine and want something higher end, I would try to hold off and wait to see what happens with the 14 and 16 inch models. That wraps FAQ, so part two is just performance things that I've noticed since last using it. First is screen brightness. MacBook Air has 400 nits brightness, MacBook Pro has 500, and that's something that I've started to notice on this laptop. Not that I've had both to compare, but I've turned off the automatic brightness and have been keeping it probably 80 to 100% brightness at all times. If I'm trying to sit out on the balcony or I'm using it by a window, I have noticed that I wish it could go brighter. Otherwise, no issues, especially for high contrast tasks like typing in Google Docs, for example. On the heat and the thermals, I haven't been able to really, really get this hot. Some people have been able to get this really hot and I just haven't quite gotten it there yet. If you're going to try and do video work and do heavy exports, on that eight gigs, despite all of these dire recommendations I'm giving you, you probably wanna bump up to the Pro and get a fan, but so far I haven't gotten it nearly as hot as I've seen kind of that 16 inch Intel i9 get when I was using that for work. Screen size has been a blessing and a curse. I'm used to using two 24 inch monitors, so obviously this is a big downgrade. I don't notice it as much for my internet apps when I'm in Slack or Discord. Um, if I'm in the messaging apps or any of the native Apple apps, I don't miss it. Um, even Lightroom and Photoshop, I don't miss it all that much. Video editing on a 13 inch screen, however, is just tough. I don't think there's any way around it. It's not fun. It's not something I like to do for an extended period of time. I'm not a big tab guy when it comes to opening a million on Chrome, but Chrome just came out with tab groups, which has also been helpful in just kind of managing screens. You know yourself best. If you think you might suffer on a 13 inch screen, I would hold out for the 14 or 16 inch. And on the video front, I haven't edited one of these videos on this machine. Based on other reviews I've watched, Final Cut seems to perform better than Premiere would, as you would expect for a native Apple app. If you've been thinking about jumping from Premiere to Final Cut, this might be a good time to do so as you get into the M1 architecture. Though again, I think if you're doing video work as a professional or daily, probably still want that 16 gigs of RAM regardless. 